tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma. My dad died last year. And although I didn't take it well, <laughs> while we were urn shopping for some unfathomable reason, I wanted a llama shaped urn. I wanted someone to put my father's remains in a llama urn so they could hand it to me and I could look them dead in the eyes and say, a llama, he's supposed to be dead. <laughs> I love you, dad. Tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma. My whole family uses humor to cope with trauma, but my husband is by far the worst. He's made a lot of inappropriate jokes in the past. Several months ago, there was a lady in our house to notarize paperwork for us. And my husband said something about, oh yeah, we have four kids, one of them's in the living room. And she goes, there's someone in the living room? I didn't see anybody. Y'all. So I told her he's joking. She's in the urn on the shelf. <laughs> she... That poor girl's face. <laughs> tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma. So right around the time that we lost my son, we had just bought a new house and we had no furniture for it. Well, that was also around the same time as the big Wayfair um, conspiracy. So after I lost my son and had to move to the new state into the new house, my mom called to tell me that we should consider buying the furniture from Wayfair because we might get lucky. Tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma. So the rest of my family doesn't actually use humor to cope with trauma, but I do. So a lot of my family is like super religious. So I don't know why, but something told me to take advantage of that. So in like 2016, I bought like a prepaid phone. I just kept it. I don't know why. I had a new number for it. I set it up. Throughout the years when I go visit family, I would store this number in their phone because most people don't even check their contacts anyway. On the photo icon, I will put a picture of my mom that passed away in like 2001. So that when birthdays and holidays come around, I send like random texts or I call them and just be silent. It's more funnier with the older people because basically they really think that she calling them from heaven. I know she would have loved this joke. Tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma. So I lost both of my parents back in the fall. This is them right here. And what happened is they were hit by a green truck. However, my mom did initially survive the accident and she lived for about another six weeks. And what happened is we couldn't physically go visit her in the hospital, but I could FaceTime her. And so the second time we're on FaceTime, all I do is I go, hey mom, um, how are you feeling today? And she says, I felt like I got hit by a truck. And then follows it with, too soon? Well, I guess not because you said it, Mom. So, yeah. Tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma. Hey, so, like, me and Mom are going to go to the store. Did you want to get something? <laughs> Tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma. So when I tried to like myself, um, I called my brother and he didn't answer like in the process. And um, so when I got to the emergency room and there's like five nurses around me prepping me for like the detox, um, like charcoal stuff that looks like tar. Um, he called me. But on like at the hospital on the nurse's phone, they made me put it on speaker. And the very first thing that he said to me is, who would have thought that you'd end up in the loony bin before I did? No one else thought it was funny. I was laughing my fucking ass off. But um, then we started making jokes about how I need to have better timing and like plan better next time. Because I called him like 20 minutes after he went to sleep and no one thought that it was funny. I thought that it was hilarious. And then my mom made jokes the whole time I was in the loony bin. Like, fucking hilarious. Sorry. 
Tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma. God, I have so many stories. Now, putting my own to the side for a moment, a couple years back, my grandma Faith passed away. Now, this is my dad's mom, and she had two sisters and a brother. Together, their names were Hope, Faith, Love, and Jim. But here's the thing about Jim. Now, a really long time ago, he did some super shady business with a pharmaceutical company, fled the country for like 10 years to build churches in Panama. Anyway, point is, family has very complicated feelings about Jim but because he built churches, that apparently makes him a pastor. So, people asked him to give the eulogy at the funeral. In it, he says, I've lost my hope, now my faith is gone, and all I have left is love. Because she was the only one still alive. They start carrying away the casket, 90-something-year-old love is hobbling along just behind it, when all of a sudden, she trips, falls flat to the ground. Everyone starts calling 911, except for my dad, who turns to my mom and whispers, Well, looks like his love's gone too. At his mother's funeral. Tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma. My father has had five heart attacks. He's a 70-year-old conservative Catholic Italian man, stubborn as fuck, he's probably gonna outlive me, but the last one really did take us by surprise because we thought we had fixed the problem. So this last one had us all pretty concerned, and we're all sitting there waiting in the waiting room when an aggravated nurse walks in and asks if we're Bob's family. We say yes, and he has us follow him. We wander into this room, and there's my dad laying there, doped up on morphine, giggling away to himself. And where I'm just like, Dad, what is so funny? You just had a heart attack. <laughs> they wouldn't let me do it. What wouldn't they let you do? They wouldn't let me cover my face with a sheet like a corpse so that you'd all start crying and think I was dead. Dad, what the fuck? The nurses were all so done with his shit. Tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma. My little sister killed herself 10 days before Christmas. Now my older sister says that she got so fessed up she hung more than just the ornaments on the tree. Tell me that you and your family use humor to cope with trauma without actually telling me that I win this. At my dad's funeral, they did not lock his casket into that hearse, so they went up a hill and that casket went poof, right into the back door. My first immediate thought was to say out loud in front of everyone, everyone who had come outside from the funeral, wouldn't it be so funny if that sucker just fell out and just flew? My sister's house burnt down and every time someone is like, oh, I love your shirt, she's like, thanks, it's new. <laughs> Literally made a video about the Amazon Prime man leaving a package at her house while her house was burning. Um, because I try to find funny in everything, right? Her house is on fire, but the Amazon Prime man came through, right? I was abused <laughs> for five years. <laughs> I don't even have anything to say about that. That one's just funny that I did that for 